Welcome to the first episode of Cooking Fun Specs with Dan Grill. On today's menu, something I would only recommend with a group of friends and after explaining exactly what you are doing, is the Augmentation Healer. The idea is that Augmentation is a support spec, and while it is classed as a DPS, it can actually do quite some healing. First of all, let's look into my recommended team comp. On its own, it will not make its way through most keys, and that is why we bring along another Augmentation Evoker. This one playing the recommended Mythic Plus build. For tanks, I would recommend either a Paladin or Druid, as they have quite high off healing when needed. And lastly, the two last DPS spots. My recommendation here would be to take two melee DPS, especially when playing with a Druid tank due to their healing targeting players close by. But overall, it does not matter too much. You could take some Shamans or Priests for their healing cooldowns or Rogues for their overall survivability. But anyone who wants to do big numbers and have a little bit of fun can work. The general plan is as follows. Cutting out a healer means you do more DPS. More DPS means that the enemies and bosses will die faster. Them dying faster means you need less healing. The healing Augvoker brings less healing. Results? Well, see for yourself. How do you build a healing augmentation evoker, you may ask? Well, it all revolves around one main talent, Dream of Spring, supported by some healing talents. Dream of Spring makes your Emerald Blossom have no cooldown but cost 3 Essence, and extend your Ebon Might on your targets. Essence Burst gives your Azure Strike and Living Flame a chance to make Emerald Blossom free, allowing you to stack up charges to do half-decent group burst healing, although you may have to ask your group to stack closely. In the class 3, you want to pick up Panacea, which heals you every time you cast Emerald Blossom. Along with your personal cooldowns, this means you almost never have to cast heals on yourself. Keep going down the right hand path, picking up the healing increased talents and make sure to pick up Twin Guardians as this will provide a shield to yourself and your target when you rescue them, which comes in very handy against nasty dots or hefty damage. In the spec tree, we want to go down both sides and as mentioned, we make sure we pick up Essence Burst. Chrono Ward makes your Breath of Eons into a strong, albeit hard to time healer cooldown, providing a huge shield upon expiry of the debuff. On the left, we pick up Inner Radiance, increasing the effectiveness of heals on yourself and the usual Molten Blood, which makes it so your blistering scales apply a shield to your target. With the other Evoker usually buffing the tank, we will be free to use the shield on allies whenever we need it. I go into modes of possibility for fun, as this drops orbs, which reduces cooldowns for anyone who picks them up, and finish the build off with Plot the Future for a short bloodlust every time you use Breath of Eons. With this in mind, let's look into the gameplay, as this will be slightly different from how you are used to playing Augmentation. Your main goal is to keep people alive, and soon you will learn that mana is the most restrictive resource for this build. Even though your Emerald Blossom now costs Essence, the mana cost has not been removed unfortunately, making it a quite taxing spell. Reserving your mana is therefore our primary goal, alongside building up Essence Burst to prepare for high burst windows. For this purpose, our main vulnerability and way to generate Essence Burst will not be Living Flame, but Azure Strikes, as Living Flame costs mana. Even though the cost of mana is reduced when damaging enemies with Living Flame, it still maintains 15% of its base cost, and well, Azure cost just doesn't cost anything. So spam this away to generate Essence Burst and keep Prescience up for even more Essence Burst procs while boosting your allies' damage. Blistering Scales and Rescue cost no mana and will provide a shield, so use this to support your allies in need. As for Ebon Might, your uptime will suffer with this build, so you want to use this more selectively when your DPS are bursting. To extend this, you will use your Empower abilities as usual and Eruption when capping on Essence, 
or Emerald Blossom when you need to heal. Always cast Fire Breath on max rank, as your Leaping Flames talent will add an extra Living Flame to your first cast after Fire Breath for each rank of Fire Breath. Sit on these Leaping Flame stacks for a heavy healing check, as this will heal your group for quite a substantial amount. When people are dipping lower, use Verdant Embrace and Emerald Blossoms initially, following up with some casts of Living Flame if needed. But keep in mind that you should try to never heal yourself directly, but use your defensive cooldowns and passive self-healing to keep your health up. With two augmentation evokers, you will have plenty of CC and stops, so try to reduce incoming damage with stuns, knocks and interrupts to prevent enemies from casting powerful abilities. And honestly, that's about that. Just a janky, weird, but quite fun build once you start playing it. But listen here, player to player. Don't go taking this into random keys, alright? You don't want to start ruining other people's experiences with something they don't expect. I myself convinced some friends to let me play it and pugged with a specific note stating what I was planning to do so everyone who signed up knew what they were in for. And as fun as it was, there were some times where we struggled with a lack of magic dispel, heavy throughput and, well obviously mana. Loads and loads of empty mana bars. But in the end, hey, we all had a good time, DPS were doing big numbers so they were happy. Hence why I wanted to share this build with all of you. To show you that not everything in this game is about metas and best builds, but sometimes, in the right circumstances, you can have some fun with weirdly cooked builds like this. Thank you all for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or guide requests, let me know in the comments below. And while you are down there, consider liking and subscribing, because it really really does help. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.